Good morning, good afternoon. This is Steve Munitonis from COTS Global, and I'm joined here by Chris Morgan from the Gator Swim Club in Massachusetts. Uh, good morning, Chris. Good morning. Oh, can yeah. you hear me? I can hear you well, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, and we're just gonna explain as, as easy as we can in layman's terms, and but we can also delve very deeply into the scientific about what is katsu. Um, and I thought I'd kick it off by just asking Chris, um, who coaches about a 300, about 300 swimmers, Chris? At Gator. Yeah, well, uh, pre-coronavirus, but yeah, we'll, we'll be yeah. around 300 when we get back from this. Yeah, how do you use Katsu, just, just to kick it off, and, and uh, I see behind your head you have the, uh, a swimmer with some Katsu bands on her upper arms. How do you use it in a uh, practical setting? Oh, that's probably more than an hour answer. But you know, really what I've found ever since discovering Katsu with you back in 2012 is we're able to, to bring three things together um, at one time with, with swimmers, specifically what we're interested in here today, but with any athlete. And that's performance, which we're all interested in, um, recovery, which we're also very interested in, but what uh, through the protocols of, of Katsu, which is really important, it's not so much the equipment as it is the protocols and that, that we can also dive into as well, is the rehabilitation and prehab that this modality uh, provides for an athlete. And it really, it really can happen all at the same time. It's a complex thing, but once you wrap your brain around it and give it a chance, that's where you really understand the power of, of using katsu for, for an athlete or, or anyone. So what you practically mean is, uh, is let, let's just take a typical um, weekend swim meet. Are you saying that the swimmer could use katsu before they actually get to the pool, during the warm up, after a race, and that evening when they go back home? Is that how you practically use it on a, in a competition setting? You could, yes, you could use it in, in, at that, every stage of, of a swim weekend uh, for any athlete or for any swimmer. Um, you know, we, we usually start, and Steve can explain this more, once the, the young swimmer is adolescent, they've gone through puberty, it's, um, even though the, the inventor has used katsu on, on even younger children, but in the competitive swimming, uh, definitely you can use it in those four aspects. Right. I just before we explain what cuts is, I just wanted to put it in the context of of the swimming world. And you also use it for your sprinters, your distance swimmers, your your IMers, your all your strokes, short access, long access, in training. Correct. Correct. The the I I use it primarily with our our national group and our senior swimmers, but you know we have a large team and I have a lot of athletes, so. There is sort of a decision that I have to make as a, as a coach and as a high-performance coach to who, you know, they all want to use it, um, but we have to make some decisions just on the number of, you know, uh, the number of uh, cycle 2.0s that we have and uh, the number of, of kids that have their own katsu bands. Yeah, great. So I'm going to explain now, what is katsu? What does that word mean and, and what are we talking about? And, and behind me, you see uh, Michael. Andrew actually with some armbands on his leg. You also see him with a uh, pulse oximeter, Massimo, who's one of our, our partners. Um, in, in Michael's arm, you see here, the color of his arm is more red, pink, than his normal uh, skin color on his chest or his shoulders. And that, that is the effect that we're trying to achieve. The bands that I have, uh, I have a dark shirt, sorry about that, but I have a maroon colored band on my arm. And this band may look like a tourniquet. It may look like a blood pressure cuff, but if the next time you get your blood pressure taken, you'll see how wide that blood pressure cuff is. Um, this is much narrower. And what it does is the blood normally goes into the arm as normal, but it's being reduced coming back out. So we call this the arterial flow is normal going in and the venous flow coming back out is slowed down and it's slowed down uh, 
and, and what the effects are. And I'm going to show, I have one band on my arm and one uh, unbanded arm, we say. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a big difference in coloration between my hand that has the band on and my hand that doesn't have the band on. You can sort of see the difference in coloration of my arm. So what's happening here is blood is going in as normal. Coming back out, it is slowed slightly. And so what happens is the capillaries and veins get engorged in blood, very, very engorged in blood. And what that does is it makes simple movement, like a freestyle movement, more difficult. And when a coach can make a, uh, a movement more difficult, or a physical therapist, or a trainer, physio, whatever you want to call it, when you can make it more difficult, you can do many, many different things. And, and I'd like to switch back to Chris here, where he can explain the difference between what he calls race pain and race pace with the COTS bands on. Go ahead, Chris. Right, so Steve and I came up with this concept uh, several years ago, or, or I guess I was just based on um, the reaction from the swimmers. And to go back a little bit on how again, how I came up with this concept is uh, when I was first learning to use katsu with my athletes, and these were good, good senior level uh, here in New England, uh, even back at Harvard, when I first started using katsu was with the Harvard women's team. Uh, the, all, the first time, and it's almost every single swimmer, whether they're an Olympian or, or an age group, uh, you know, with just age group cuts, they'll swim with the katsu bands, arms or legs, and they'll do a couple 25s, a couple 50s. We can get more into depth on that later. The reaction is always the same. They say, oh my, that's how I feel at the end of my race. And so I started thinking about that and working backwards. Well, what does that mean? That's how I feel at the end of our, our race. And, you know, most of us are former swimmers. Um, even if we're not, whatever, you know, you get to that. You, we're always trying to reach not only... Are we trying to go as fast as we can in practice? But we're trying to simulate the physiology of a race. And really, and, and I don't wanna bore anyone with this, but if you do a lot of research, you know, they, you see a lot of coaches or national teams, and whenever you see the US national team, a lot of, um, you know, they're taking a lot of blood from earlobes or fingertips to test the lactic acid. And I believe, again, someone could argue this, I believe, that with katsu, you can not only reach the physiological state of a race, you go beyond. Um, you have to experience it to understand what I'm talking about. But so for me, it became more important that when we're using katsu in the water for performance, not for the recovery, so this is specific to performance, you have to really wrap your brain around race pain is more important than race pace. It's, it's, you can swim at race pace with the Katsu bands on, arms or legs. It's difficult. You get better as you get more experience as an athlete. But really, once they have, and it could be short, 625s, and they're hitting race pace, and they ha you can tell by their face. You can tell by the, the katsu color is what we call it, what Steve was talking about. Always following the protocols and using safety first. And once the athletes start to understand race pain, they actually like it. And they like it because they don't have to swim 10 200s to reach that race physiology. I'm not saying that we have to cut corners. This is not about cutting corners. This is about reaching a race pain that I believe is almost, again, this is my opinion, but I believe it's almost impossible to reach without cuts, unless you're in a race. Yes, so what is happening, when Chris is talking about race pain, how does that actually occur? And I have, a, you can see behind me an image um, of where I have the, um, uh, this is actually an arm, a right arm actually, of a, of a person we were doing testing in the laboratory. And I have a band around them. And I have their band at what we call 300 SKU, or roughly 300 millibars mercury pressure. That's pretty high. In fact, that's very high. In fact, that's probably much higher than you would actually use in any uh, uh, swimming setting. The, this dark part right here that you see below, let me just point it here, that's your artery. So that's the blood going into the arm. 
below, and above that, that dark spot here, that's your vein. So that's your blood coming out. You see, even when these bands are on very, very tightly, the arterial flow or the flow going into the arm is unimpeded. It's the same. That, that width of the, of the uh, uh, artery is the same. But if you look very carefully, and you know we're doing this with sophisticated scientific equipment, you can see very, very slight indentation of the, um, of the vein. And that leads to what we call the arterial flow going in. The venous flow is being modified or slowed down and that leads to the redness, the pinkness as the capillaries are actually uh, filled. Now when capillaries are filled, what then happens is something very, very profound. It's a, it's a biochemical reaction in the body and it leads to all kinds of different um, effects. One is that these, uh, and it's a little bit low, but um, right here, this is the, an illustration of the inside of the capillaries and veins. And what is being produced by that pressure, that, that mechanical pressure of the bands, but also the movement of the arm, whether it's a uh, physical therapy movement or it's actually a freestyle breaststroke, backstroke, or, or a butterfly. These VEGF, we call it, vascular endothelial growth factor, these, these endothelial cells actually are produced at a much greater rate than normal. And then that leads to a production of nitric oxide. And that actually helps the capillaries and veins become more elastic. And if our capillaries and veins are more elastic, for every heartbeat that we have, blood is getting to the working muscles more quickly and lactate is actually being removed from the body, from the muscles at a faster rate. So I'm, I'm delving a little bit into the science here, but we wanted to mix a little bit of science with practical applications uh, that, that Chris is explaining. So Chris, you were talking about the six, 625s, let's say. Um, really, when, a, when a, in a, one of your athletes comes to you and says, coach, I want to I wanna try katsu, what do you actually explain to them? What do you, what do, you do for that kid if he's ne he or she has never seen katsu before? How do you introduce it to him? That's a good question. The, really, it's, it's kind of uh, stealing something from Coach Bill Boomer, who uh, many of you know, you know, he talk, talked a lot about, are you a dog person or a cat person, right? And so, my analogy to that is, are they a leg-based swimmer or are they an arm-based swimmer? And usually what I'll do is if, if they're a swimmer who primarily, and, and I use my judgment as well, they're a leg-based swimmer, I'll have them start with their legs because they have a little bit more, you know, development, whether they're, I tell them to sprint and they're doing it, uh, be, or, or they're using their legs to drive their sprint. If they're more of a middle distance or distance freestyler, again, you know, everyone's a little different. Um, I'll, I'll, do, I'll start with the armbands. I want them to experience something a little bit more in their strength rather than their weakness, even though later on I try to use katsu more on their weaker side than on their stronger side. Again, are you a 40% leg swimmer, 60%? Again, um, so I start with that and we'll swim. You know, I usually, I, I use a very similar formula. I'll have them swim 150 yards and it's usually, uh, if it's, if they have the leg belts on, I'll have them do a 50 easy kick, a 50 leg driven swimming, and then a 50 easy swim where they almost just pull their legs along. And if they have the armbands on, I'll do 150 where they'll do a 50, I'll usually do sculling or, or just, you know, even, even so, like a long arm dog paddle to kind of get the burn in the arms. And then a, a pace 50 followed by a 50 easy kick. So it's a little bit, you have to think a little bit uh, abstract that if they have the armbands, I'll have them finish with kick. And the reason I, I want the lactic acid, as you said, Steve, you start to feel that pain. So that's how we start, just they feel it. And then if, if I see, and that, I have a lot of experience with it, so I'll know in a way just on their facial expression, um, again, checking using the protocols of katsu for capillary refill. Uh, we'll do anywhere between six to 12 25s 
at race pain. Again, what I, I use my own sort of modified Borg scale, or Chris scale, as they know, one to 10. And 10 for me means that they've reached that race pain and we can, we can stop. Um, I like them to be in an eight and a half to nine and a half. My athletes know that and they know when I say nine, they're like, oh, you can see their face. And it's very, it's, it's very interesting because I haven't told them to do, you know, 10, 200 butterflies or, uh, you know, eight, 400 IMs. I've asked them to go 12, 25s at race pain. And if they, the more they have experience with katsu. So that's how we start. It's real simple. A couple 25s. I just want them to experience what race pain is. Once they know what it is, then we start to use a, sort of a hybrid of race pain and race pace because we do i know if, if i have a if i have an athlete and i have and we can talk about that who can swim 12 25s on a normal coaching send off 30 seconds or 25 second seconds and they have that race pain but they're also hitting race pace i am i i that's all i need to know that they're going to be right on for whatever whether we're in preseason, mid-season or or you know, we're at, um, the championship season. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you mentioned something, um, about race, uh, or capillary refill. And, um, I have behind me, um, Robert Griswold. Um, he had, he's a Paralympic, uh, swimmer. Um, he's won a few world championships, a few Olympic, uh, Paralympic medals, and you could see on his arm very clearly where he has the bands on, he's sort of flexing for the camera, how the coloration of his arms, the forearm and upper arm is dramatically different from his torso. So his torso, he, he trains in Indiana, his torso is his normal skin color and his arm, and if he had leg bands, it'd be the same uh, coloration on his legs, it's a much deeper color. And Chris, you mentioned capillary refill. Can you explain that very, very important concept? Right, so capillary refill, you know, it comes from, uh, old, it's old military, and I think we have a military person out there in our audience, Captain Doolittle, but capillary refill is very simply just pressing on the palm. Usually we press right, right in this area right here. And if you press, even without the katsu bands on, you notice that the skin goes white. You're physically pressing the blood out of the capillaries in, in that region. And the reason we, we do it on the hand is, is, is actually because it's very white. For most human beings, from whatever race or, or, or part of the world you come from, you, you have much lighter skin on your palm. So we press, it goes white. And if that refill time to a color where the blood is then re, you know, coming back into the capillaries. Uh, if that's under three seconds, then per the protocols of Katsu, we're in, in the safe zone. If that becomes greater than you know, three or even five seconds, we know that we've gone away from the protocols of Katsu and we have started to occlude, and that's not at all what either we wanna do or what this is designed for. So CRT, capillary ref refill time, under three seconds, on the leg, we do it usually on the knee to the to either side of the kneecap, or even you can do it on the foot. Again, it sometimes depends on the pigmentation of someone's skin, but I've checked the CRT on thousands of people now, and, and you can always find, you know, and it's actually a great indication of, of just general health as well, as you can tell something. I can even see a change in my athletes when their CRT is different. I know they're getting sick. So I've, I, I can almost predict when people are getting sick just by using CRT or, or especially with katsu. And so, Chris, what, what you have uh, often is the kids make sure, even when they're in the water, like this gentleman here, you make sure that their coloration of their limbs is a deeper, redder, pinker color. The moment Correct. that this changes, the moment that if, in this case with Robert, if his arm and forearm would turn white, uh, gray, blue, that is a danger sign. That only happens under medical conditions with uh, a, a medical tourniquet. And although this may look like a tourniquet, it is the exact opposite. The function is the exact opposite. So we, we want this to keep the blood in. We do not want it to come out. And that's why it's very, very important 
that when you put the bands on and you inflate them, that the, the band is actually uh, what we call snug, but not tight. And what do we mean by snug, but not tight? There's nuances to both of those words. Snug is the point when you put the band on, the band, you can put a finger inside or between the band and the arm, but not two fingers. So very simple, we had to figure out how are we going to make this system, the Katsu system, safe for everybody. We're talking age group swimmers, collegiate swimmers, uh, Paralympic swimmers, um, and our oldest master swimmers, who is 92 years old. So we wanna be able to put one finger in, and I'm moving it in here, but I couldn't put two fingers in. Two fingers just don't fit. When I do that, immediately my hand, and I don't know if you can tell the difference, one hand is, is darker than the other. Blood is starting to pool in the arms. Um, does anybody have any um, questions? If you do at any point, um, just uh, write it out, type it out in the chat room, and we can um, answer them as we go, or we'll, if there's a lot, we'll save it toward the end. But we just wanted to, this was a, a uh, offering by Swimshare, um, Katsu, again, largely through Michael Andrew, um, has made it known in the um, swimming world. And um, he is one of our best users. He wake, when he wakes up in the morning, he's using it. Before he goes to a uh, workout or competitions, he's using it. He's using it in the water, both on his arms and his legs. He's using it on his legs for starts, for turns, for breakouts, um, and then afterwards for recovery. Um, but Chris, over in uh, Gator Swim Club, whether you're at um, uh, the universities that you coach at, and I know you coach at, at a few, you're teaching not only uh, the younger swimmers, but you've got older swimmers with all kinds of aches and pains that, that come with age. And how do you use them, not with competitive swimmers to get faster, but just with your average 65 year old who just wakes up in the morning and they've got a sore back or they had a shoulder uh, uh, surgery or something? How do you use it for those people? Yeah. so. That's an interesting question, and again, and uh, maybe for a whole nother episode. But um, fortunately, I have a, a, a background in in sports science, and specifically in human biomechanics, human movement. Uh, I studied at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland, and it sort of opened my mind to knowing that you know, like like a lot of people. I mean, we all have our theories and know what's best, but I think everything's connected, and that's why I believe with Katsu, you really bring, you know with the with the older master swimmers specifically and, and even worked with some not swimmers but just people who are trying to to feel better um i think that the specific examples there's there's many but i'll give one example of a of a young 70 year old 78 year old man who i worked with he's actually uh, works at the new england aquarium and we started he wanted to get faster and he also had a, a kind of a chronic shoulder problem. So we started with some real basic physical therapy exercises, you know, it's very simple internal, external ro rotating movements with his arm, but with the katsu bands on. And we started actually with not even using any surgical tubing, just the exact movement, you know, keeping his elbow close to his side with the katsu arm bands on. So he was getting, and we didn't talk about it very much yet, Steve, but a systemic effect. Um, on land. I then had him go into the water and we did some, rather than race pain or, or race pace, we just did simple, smooth, perfect technique swimming. And he also experienced at a very slow, you know, he was 78. Uh, he, he felt that sort of race pain. Um, you know, at first he thought it was more that, that it was, he said, oh, should I stop? And I said, well, can you keep going? And he's a tough guy and he did. Um, so we continued. There, there he is, yeah. Um, so we continued using um, just some real simple drills and skills. And it's what opened my mind also to thinking that maybe there's a whole another approach of just doing not race pain, but, but a technical swimming with having a physiological systemic effect. But with this gentleman, 
we did it J just that was our formula was some simple physical therapy exercises and uh, some some slow and easy perfect technique swimming and what happened some people don't don't believe this but it's it's an incredible and it's it's not the first time this has happened to me with older athletes is his chronic shoulder was gone and he started to get faster and he does a lot of open water swims and uh he said he, he started he was already he said he was already winning all his races because most of the people in his age group were were not alive anymore but um he started actually he was excited he was beating the 60 year olds and then he started beating the 50 year olds and he recently a year ago did the alcatraz swim and you know he was really excited that he he, he said he beat all the young guys that were 50 yeah. so um it's kind of a uh, a little bit random and I went off uh, off tangent Steve but yeah that's that's a real you know and that's one of many yeah uh, with some some of the older master swimmers and then um Chris I want you to talk a little bit about recovery um recovery from a, a vigorous workout uh recovery from a prelim competition heading into finals or recovery in between day one and day two and um, I mean, you have this down to a science where the kids just come out, even though they've warmed down, they come either back to the hotel or, or to you. And you use the COTS device actually to help remove the, the lactate, the, the remaining, the residual parts of that lactate. And you really get a quick, not only do you get a quick um, uh, recovery process going, but it's profoundly comprehensive and and how do you do that on the on the you know we've sp spoke about um a performance we've talked a little bit about uh rehabilitation but there's this third realm of katsu that you are just unbelievably good at and that is recovery and sort of touch upon how you use recovery so for me and and um i'll actually probably call out one of my friends who's on here because he he actually experienced it as well so I, I think recovery is probably something that we, especially after uh, a, lo a lot of us have spent some time over the last month or five weeks educating ourselves, recovery is, it is probably the most important thing. And I think it's one of the things that we in the sport of swimming are not very good at. Um, we're not very good at it as coaches and we're not very good at it as athletes. Um, so there's all kinds of recovery out there, right? There's recovery nutrition, whether it's, you know, your, your protein shake or your recovery drink. There's, you, you see a lot of, you know, stretching. We've done, done stretching for forever, right? Since the dawn of swimming. Um, and, you know, most recently it starts to get, you see the ice baths on, uh, on deck. Um, you see the recovery pump or uh, the Normatec boots, which are, they're great. But what I believe Katsu does is you turn your own self into a recovery machine. So like, like Steve said, right after you race between prelims and finals, between actual races, you can do your, your normal warm down, which is good. Um, sometimes the conditions don't allow for, for great warm down. Here in New England, our warm down pools are either non-existent. We don't have warm down pools. We have six lane competition pools and the kids are expected. You see coaches telling them to go walk around the pool, the pool deck 10 times. But with Katsu, arms or legs, and you, if you have time, you can do arms and legs. Because the effect is systemic, you have to remember, we saw Steve Steven's arm change colors, but you have to remember that the heart is on the opposite side. So it's not just what's happening distal to the bands, whether you have the leg bands or the arm bands, it's what's happening in your whole body. So you are actually turning your body and with the cycle mode, you'll have pressure on, pressure off, pressure on. When we're in the training mode in the pool, it's a constant pressure. We didn't talk about the cycle mode where there's a, a, a 30 second pressure and then a five second release. 30 seconds of pressure, a little more pressure and then a release. And that is just over three, three minutes. And so what I do is I have the athletes do it three times. And each time we'll either decrease the, the desired pressure or increase. Um, some of them like to have more pressure as they go, just like with massage. I like it a little harder. Um, I like to have, you know, the ice bath just up, you know, just, just my, from my knees down. Everyone's a little different. So I learn what the athletes like. 
and do a lot of just see how they do after we do just the arms or just the legs. So uh, with this cycle function, pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off, you're literally turning your own arm into a pump of recovery or your legs. And again, it's systemic, so it's the whole body. And I found and I've seen that the athletes, they, they like it, they, they, they feel better. But for me, the, the evidence is in how they swim after. And I think we, we've shared and have on our blog, you know, Michael Andrew used the Katsu cycle to recover at the Junior World Championships when I think he broke three world records in 350s. And I believe, Steve, you might correct me, on a period of about 45 minutes. Yes, that was uh, what he did. So same thing in um, uh, what happened uh, with Chris in the small pools in New England when the, the uh, athletes do not have time to warm down. Or Chris, in my case, we use it at our high school dual meets. And quite often the high school dual meets, there may be a competition pool and there may be one or two warm down lanes. That's it. And it's, they're filled with dozens of kids throughout. So the kids aren't getting a good warm down. And we found in between, even in the fast paced high school meets where a kid is doing 100 free, a 200 free, and then two relays, we're cycling them in between each of their events. Now, granted in, in uh, the school where I volunteer, we've got 85, I think, um, athletes, so we can't do all 85. We'll do either the varsity kid or the kid who has an important swim coming up. And um, I, you know, I want to say that the, the recovery is not only at the um, at the competition itself, but actually, and you can see the the photo that I have. This is a photo of the Katsu machine, but we call this the Katsu Cycle 2.0, being used at 30,000 feet in an airplane going, I forget if this is going to or from a competition. So we actually use it both for helping to overcome that jet lag and also Chris use it when the, when that day one is over, the kids go back to the hotel, you're katsuing them actually <laughs> after dinner and before you go, to, they go to bed, correct? Yeah, no, they, they, uh, Again, sometimes it ends up being a, um, a little bit of a competition for who, whose events are more important. And, um, but yeah, they'll, they'll be at dinner after, after the first day, second day, third day of, of a championship meet. And they will use, use the katsu to, to recover uh, all, all the way up until, you know, we have lights out. So um, we, we've got a system down. And, and you know, in, in full, in, in all honesty, what ends up happening is, and what's great for me is when the athletes uh, decide to to purchase their own device, and and that way the it makes it a little easier for more people. And we have you know good team good teammates, and they'll share with each other. And it's just because it, it's sometimes it's interesting to see that after the first time, some of them that they do it, they're like, oh, I didn't really feel anything. And then the next thing you notice is they're doing it all the time because they start to realize that the recovery they feel on the next day is, is, is amazing. Yeah. Um, I, uh, before we go into what the exact product is, I, I want to explain actually how Katsu came about uh, coming here in the United States. And uh, let me just uh, take care of this. Who is this? Um, uh, so anyway, what we, what we did is I was actually one of the coaches at the 2001 uh, world Championships in Fukuoka, Japan. Um, and that was a very good um, event where we had, uh, or <laughs> very memorable event. Um, uh, Ian Thorpe was really coming online then and, and uh, we were in Japan. And because I was a coach, I was actually enabled to have a deck pass. And I just walked in one day and I saw one of the Japanese swimmers used these bands around his arms in the locker room. And I immediately thought, well, that must be um, maybe he has an injury or something. And, and because I can um, speak, read and write Japanese, I, I just asked him, I said, well, you know, what, what is this? And he said, uh, Katsu. And again, because he's an athlete from, from another country, I didn't want to bother him too much. So I, I went my way um, during the course of this competition. 
um, I actually um, helped a lot of people out, not only the Americans, because I was able to speak Japanese when there was problems. Um, I was helping out. Um, I was actually going into the interview room and helping out. I was uh, with, there was a disqualification or a protest, you know, I was right there. And afterwards, one of the coaches came up to me and said, hey, you know, you were a lot of help. I said, oh, it was my pleasure to help. Um, you know, can we give you something? I said, no, I just want to know what are these bands? You know, I, I saw these bands and they introduced me to this man here who is Dr. Sato. Um, in this photograph, he is uh, 71. I wish I had a picture of his arms, but he's been doing katsu all his life and he was the inventor. And he was the one who had come up with Japan in the 1960s and had self-experimented with katsu for, for decades. And then about the 1990s, he began a uh, formal research program, 10 years with the University of Tokyo Hospital. And that is where, you know, research like this, um, you know, occurred. And, and they used 7,000 cardiac rehab patients. So that's 7,000 people, about 700 patients a year, who had a heart attack, a stroke, um, heart bypass surgery, etc. And they were actually using these bands on their arms as a form of recovery. Uh, and so Katsu began really its formal research project to help cardiac rehab patients recover from their traumatic event. And that's why when we have these bands on, we never, never want to occlude or cut off blood supply. We always want the blood supply to be going. And so the roots of katsu, and katsu, it's K-A-A-T-S-U, or K-A-T-S-U, um, means K-A means additional, and A-T-S-U, atsu, means pressure. And so you probably have heard of shiatsu, where she means hand, basically a massage. Shiatsu means a massage with your hands. Katsu means additional pressure. And so that's really where the roots came. And in 2001, when I met Dr. Sato, I asked him, I said, God, you know, I, I've never seen this before. I've been up to the uh, you know, US Olympic Training Center. Uh, my own coaches uh, throughout my career included John Urbanchek, uh, Jim Montrella, uh, Joe Burnell, Ed Spencer, those four were my coaches during my age group, uh, high school and collegiate career. And they had never s explained anything this, like this to me. And I asked Dr. Sato, why is this not known around the world? And Dr. Sato said, well, I don't speak English and I don't travel outside of Japan. And so in 2001, I thought, wow, this, this would be very interesting I wasn't thinking about any business or revolutionizing uh, the swimming world or athletics or recovery or rehabilitation. I was actually thinking about my own parents, my own self. I said, gosh, Dr. Sato, after you've explained these aspects of katsu, I thought, how can I learn this? And he, he pointed up to his head and he says, well, all the information is in my head. And I said, okay, well, do you mind me? Uh, studying under you and he says oh it'd be my pleasure and so it took 13 years and I visited Japan at least four times a year and I, I was able to sit with the cardiologist the internist the academic researchers who were studying katsu and we came up uh, when they were comfortable that my knowledge of katsu was sufficient then Dr. Sato said okay go ahead and and demonstrate this uh, to the world. And we started off with the U.S. Um, ski team because this was about 2013, 2014. So right before the Sochi Olympics, Sochi Winter Olympics, and we had great success with our Olympic skiers. And because, again, I come from the aquatic world, I thought, how do we adapt these uh, bands to the swimming world? And we simply made, this is um, fabric, normal fabric, but then the next version was made of neoprene. And so we made the bands neoprene and waterproof. And that's where we are. Um, Chris um, was one of our early um, advocates or actually the earliest advocate. Um, uh, and I want to sort of end here before we open it up for questions is Chris, 
explained how running a Tough Mudder event led you to be a, a true believer of Katsu. Yeah, so not uh, making the story too long. I, in 2000, Steve and I started working together in 2012. And then in 2013, uh, in the summer of 2013, I decided to do a Tough Mudder, one of these obstacle course races. Um, I had begun working with Steve and another uh, a Japanese gentleman, Mr. Shimizu, who was teaching me at Harvard University. We were working exclusively with the women's team. And he was first teaching myself and the head coach, Stephanie Moroski. And on a weekend, I went up to New Hampshire and did this Tough Mudder. And on a, it was about a 12 mile course. And on the, literally the last obstacle was just climbing over a log I slipped, fell, and knew right, and landed on my side. And I had only ever broken one bone in my in my lifetime, and that was doing something uh, idiotic back when I lived in Switzerland. And I knew right away that I broke a rib, but I toughed it out, tough mutter, and finished the event. Um, that was on a Saturday. The next day, I was in so much pain. I knew I had to go get it checked. So on that Monday morning. I went in and had, I went to the, I went to Mass General and got an x-ray and lo and behold, I had not only one broken rib, but I had two. And they're very painful if anyone knows that. Um, and that afternoon I was supposed to have a lesson learning again about Katsu. And I told Steven and I told Mr. Shimizu, I, I can't even walk. I'm in so much pain. And they of course told me, no, you need to do more Katsu. So I, I started to really ask about the science of it. And Eight days later, of do, I did very aggressive amounts of katsu, probably four or five times a day, just the cycle. So literally sitting, pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure off, about 10 minutes, four or five times a day. Eight days later, I went in for an x-ray. I managed to convince some, uh, someone at the training room to get me an x-ray with one of our doctors at Harvard, and he did. I didn't tell him that I had just had an x-ray. And the doctor said, well, you, he said, you, you probably broke a rib several months ago, but we see that it's healed. And so eight days, and I was feeling much better. And so for me, that was my wow moment. That's all I needed to know that I had, I had healed faster. It, it, it just, it allowed me to heal exponentially faster. And you, anyone who's interested can, all, there's so much science about healing faster, especially bone growth. And I had it happen again. I, did another uh, stupid coaching move a couple of years ago and jumped over a fence to get into a pool for my athletes um, and broke my heel, the calcaneus bone, which is very vascular. So it, it can, there is a lot of, you know, so again, I got out of a boot, a walking boot in about six days instead of six weeks. Um, I, I do see Steve, I'm going to interrupt both of us because, yeah. you know, we're all hopefully most of our swimmers here, um, we were very fortunate to have Captain John Doolittle, who is a retired uh, captain in Navy SEAL and swam at the Air Force Academy. So he actually can even, if, if you don't mind, Stephen, maybe John can explain a little bit how, you know, a swimmer who is a very, very uh, decorated military person could explain how they even use it to recover in, in, in the military. John? Hey, thanks, Chris. Uh, just real quick, I don't want to go too long, guys. I'm and I value all your time, but the way I got introduced to Katsu was on the, the rehab side. So um, spent my career in the SEAL teams and the SEAL teams, it's not a matter if you get hurt, it's when you get hurt. Um, they did uh, the embedded PTs, the physical therapist did Katsu as part of my uh, rehab. And um, same injury I personally had had when I was six years younger. It was a full thickness tear supraspinatus, a rotator cuff uh, repair. Um, first time that was about 11 months uh, till full range of motion, strength, power, and all that. Um, when they used Katsu for my rehab, uh, it was almost half. At six months, I was full back 95% strength, range of motion, and all that. But in the sport of swimming, um, yes, it helps on the rapid rehab side, uh, but the recovery piece is what we see a lot of the guys in the human performance 
uh, centers throughout SOCOM. Uh, that's U.S. Uh, Special Operations Command is SOCOM. Um, the recovery piece is interesting because you get the guys, they'll be in the HP, the human performance, they'll do the workout, and then they'll go, uh, the, at the end of the workout, they'll do something heavy, like let's just say it's squats, right? Not with katsu, but just heavy squats. And the tissue in the legs, of course, you guys know the deal, flushed, uh, or you get tons of lactate and metabolites from heavy, intense work like that. What they're also using katsu for is that immediate um, recovery piece. Because when you have the leg bands on, it goes through this automated cycle, right? Stephen was talking about 30 seconds of pressure, five seconds, none. 30 seconds, a little more pressure, five seconds, none. Each time the bands come up in pressure, everything distal of the bands, everything downstream of the bands, because these are not tourniquets and the blood's always moving, everything becomes engorged. Imagine little uh, capillary balloons, right? Everything gets engorged wide open. The cardiac output is adjusting because it has to, right? Cardiac output adjusts to keep the blood moving through those bands, but now everything's engorged. So now you get this rapid, complete release of the bands and all that tissue distal of the bands that was just stretched wide open all the way to the capillaries, now you have that increased uh, perfusion index just whoo, and you can almost feel it. It's like a flushing sensation for the metabolites and uh, the lactate. That is kind of game changing type stuff. So guys are using it a lot for that and a lot for uh, rapid uh, rehabilitation. Well, back over to you, Chris, thanks. Uh, thank, thank you, John. Um, uh, I have up on the screen, um, I know it's getting a little, little late here and, and uh, we'll end it before we uh, open up for questions, but uh, we have um, uh, two main products. One, what we call the Cuts Master. Uh, that's overkill um, for most swim teams and most users, although it is used in hospitals, clinics, and and uh, athletic departments. This this machine here has all the bells and whistles. Um, unless a team has uh, six thousand dollars for uh, you know a slush fund for a rainy day, uh, this is probably overkill. But it is our signature product that you use uh, for for everything. Um, the, the product that most people would be more uh, in tune with is our Cycle 2.0. Again, I have it in my hand. Uh, you can see, see it here. It, it's that small. It's very, very light um, and coaches can put it in their pocket um, and carry it with them where they go, as can swimmers. It comes in a, a carrying case. Um, you see on the left side, uh, the tubes, the connector tubes, and this is a uh, EBS connector so you can recharge the unit. Uh, this is much more uh, reasonably priced. It's at $900. It comes with four bands, two arms and two legs, and you think, $900, how can we you know, manage that? Well, actually, if you think about it, um, when, you, when the coaches who do have these units, they have two arms, two legs, they can actually have some athletes using their arms, some athletes using their legs. Because the effects of katsu can be done in, in a limited time, let's say at a high school dual meet or uh, uh, you know, at a hotel as you're in a team van going to the event, you, if you're in the car for half an hour, you can have at least three uh, kids using this. So it's a very versatile machine you can take anywhere on a pool deck, in a plane, in a hotel, and that's $900. Um, thanks to Swimshare, we're offering a 10% discount uh, for the next um, 24 hours. Um, uh, you could email me. I'm going to leave uh, the, um, uh, the uh, email in the uh, show notes here in the chat room, and you can contact me anytime. Uh, you can contact Chris Morgan. Um, I'll leave his um, email in the chat room also. And if you have any questions, you can, uh, and you want to talk to a Navy SEAL, um, uh, former Captain uh, John Doolittle is in St. Petersburg, Florida. So we are all available to answer any questions or any follow up. And, and uh, I also encourage you 
to visit our website. That's katsu-global.com. I'll leave that in the show notes. Also, our blog has, um, I think, 350 some odd examples of how katsu is used um, on dry land and in the water for your core at, in addition to any technical work. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, if they have any questions, great. We've, uh, we're recording this show, so we'll uh, have it up on uh, Swimshare uh, for if you have any coaches, athletes, parents. Um, again, because we're coming from the um, work of the uh, cardiologist at the University of Tokyo, uh, we have a lot of information, reams and reams and reams of uh, um, peer review published articles uh, and practical examples. Um, so anyway, um, I'm leaving my email and all that information in the, uh, the show notes here. And uh, if there's no questions, I want to thank you very much for your time. Um, I mean, it's been, uh, you know, I know it's a tough time. But uh, we have kids, um, NFL players, um, uh, Navy SEALs who are actually using this device at their home for strength, speed, agility, um, and recovery. So, you know, I encourage you to all look at it. Um, and again, it comes from Japan, uh, backed by decades of um, peer review uh, research. So, um, Steve. anyway, yes. Um, just, just to mention if any coaches out there and, and, uh, you know, I, like I said, I do have some colleagues out there. Hi, Jimmy is if I know it's sort of an abstract thing and, and a little bit hard to wrap one's brain around, but really it's, it's, it's kind of mind blowing once you start to use it with your athletes and see the performances, uh, change without a lot of changing in, in, training modalities just adding this and it's it's not a it's not fins and it's not paddles and then you know on the other side it's not some kind of new uh threshold training or long distance training or sprint training it really is a hybrid of both things because it, it is it's these belts you put on your arm but if anyone does have questions you know more specific i would love to share sets that i do um, examples i've had kids go in the matter of months from you know, 48 and 100 yard fly to, uh, or excuse me, 48 and 100 yard free to 44 from from September to December. I've had a, a kid who was actually injured, a 200 breaststroker, uh, who went from a 218 to a 201. And I don't say these to try to sell a product. I say this because it's, it's it happened in front of my own eyes. And the only thing that we we changed was we added katsu. It really is sort of a it taps into a part of their physiology that I think, um, depending on how, how much they push themselves, that, that really they can't tap into with other, other means, other training devices or other training systems. So if you have questions, please email me. Yeah. And uh, again, I want to thank Swimshare uh, for this opportunity. Um, it, it's great, uh, specifically uh, Megan Johnston and, and Dan Wagner um, thank you very much. And again, we've got stuff on our blog and on our website. And um, uh, if there's no more questions, we'll, we'll uh, end this meeting and then we will um, have this uh, posted and or saved and recorded and posted. And thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate your time. Thank Be you. well. Be thank safe. You.